Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part one, I share with you my techniques and tips on how to do the outline and also how to pastel paint the water and the sea and create that atmosphere. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Right, just to explain then the cross-reference method again, uh, if you just see my cursor there, it's moving around, look. So the idea is to place your cursor, say on the side of the head here, and then at the top here you've got like a dashed line. And so that gives you the, the actual width measurement, it's all in inches, scaled at 10 inch by 14 inch, the uh, reference image. So then you could sort of find where it is on the depth so it's eight and seven eighths there at that point at the side of the head and you're looking at six and one eighth so then you can actually place a mark then onto your board and then you can just go around and do in certain areas and just put in the odd mark here and there and I give you the location where it is and then just freehand the rest of it. Now you can put quite a few marks in when you're first starting out but the idea behind this method is to get less and less little cross-reference marks and do more freehand. It's a great way to learn you, you to see shapes and everything uh, and eventually you'll be able to do it freehand so it's a good tool for that but you can see my cursor on the reference image to your left on screen where I'm pointing it and where I'm actually doing the mark uh, and I'm using the pencil on a vertical plane as well and a horizontal plane here and there so I'm using the freehand method as well as the cross reference uh, pencil I'm using is a 708 Carbothello pencil which is really great for this uh, uh, because if you erase it, it it's, you can't see where it's been really, so it's a really good pencil colour. Now with the waves, I'm keeping a similar pattern so I don't get lost in all the detail. It's a good way of keeping relaxed, so if you try and keep it similar, you don't have to be exact, but very similar, it keeps you sort of focused then on getting the correct colour and the balance rather than losing yourself in all that detail. There's the blues and the red I'm using from the Conti Pastel range. Really nice colour fast pencils. And then here I'm using the Carbothello ones. And I'm using a grey white pencil rather than white uh, because it's quite soft and it creates a, like a desaturation of the colour in in very subtle way so it's a lovely pencil to use rather than the white. I use a combination of different blues for the sky I've changed it a little bit to what the reference image is I've made it a little bit more sort of turquoise blue just to give it a little more interest um, trying different blues from different um, brands now the rising I tend to use a ruler for that to make sure it's dead straight and it's and it's straight with the the horizontal plane. Now I'm marking out the shadows of the waves with a plains grey. So just marking those out. Uh, just going over what I've done previously with the 708 um, outline pencil. But here I've slowed it down to real time so you can see how I'm putting that sort of subtlety of movement into the water uh, and then just really just letting go and connecting to the energy of it and just let it flow from you rather than think about it too much. i give you a tip to help you relax while you're doing all this detail is to allow that image to come inside you so you're actually drawing it from inside your heart 
rather than you going outside with thinking and forward tunnel vision to try and draw it. So it just keeps everything nice and relaxed then. And then once it's all mapped out, I'm glazing over with two different blues from the Contia Pastel range, a number 10 and a number 6 blue. Now this area, once I've mapped it out, I'm glazing over with just the number 6, which is more of a turquoisey blue and less ultramarine, because as it goes into the distance, it's more ultramarine, and then it goes less ultramarine as it comes towards you. If you enjoy this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. I always follow the similar procedure, which is to map it out first, get everything sort of in its place. So just focusing on just getting the shapes right. I'm not really concerned about the colors and everything. Just getting everything sort of in the right place and the right feel. So I'm using a gray here to start with, just to shape it up. And then what I'll do is glaze over then with the blue, just to get a sort of feel for it. And it's filling the, the actual pastel mat as well with pigment, which makes it easier then when I start putting the richer colors on. So again here, I'm just mapping it all out, same as what I did previously. And just making sure everything is in the right place trying to follow the similar pattern to what the reference image is so I don't get too lost in it and it creates more of a relaxed feeling then now I'm using the orange now to desaturate the blue and also a brown to make a darker shadowy color you've just got to jump in and put the pigment down and just see what happens really uh, don't try and overthink it just feel your way and you'll find that all these shapes just start to come together without even um, working it out at all. It, it just sort of happens. The more you can open up your heart, the more you can let go of the mind and thinking about it too much, the more it just becomes second nature then. So it's just a case of letting go. You'll get a sense of what colour to use, you know, a bit more orange, a bit more blue. Um, and a bit of brown. It sort of creates different sort of shadows and different sort of feeling within that wave. To try and keep it loose and free flowing, uh, I'm using that white grey and then just glaze over the top. It's creating that sort of subtlety I'm looking for and, and sort of the sort of misting look to it. Now it's always great to find a colour which is very similar to what you're looking for and I was lucky enough to find this in the Karen Dash. It's a 093 and it's perfect for this sort of uh, area here where it's a bit less depth of water and you've got the colour of the sand and the, and the blue mixed together. So I'm laying that pigment down first, that colour, and then going over again with the, the 110 of the Carbothello range. And then just putting some ultramarine over the top of that and that's just the colour I'm looking for. Just like to take this opportunity to thank all my patrons for their wonderful support every month. Can't thank you enough, really appreciate it. If you're interested in joining me on Patreon, please check out the link in the description below for more details. This portrait will be on there at some point in two parts in all real time so be sure to check out that when it's available now my approach to this was to just get all this blocking in now just get the color in there and don't be concerned about the details and the subtleties similar to when i do a portrait you know i've got the three stages same here it's the underdrawing and then it'll be the rich colors then the details so this is the underdrawing so i'm just getting everything in position and get a feel for it so you are actually experimenting mixing the colors while you're doing this stage but i'm not concerned about getting everything uh the correct value the correct um chroma it's just a matter of just getting that color down now I found a pencil in the Carbothello range, a similar colour to the actual colour of the sand, which was handy. Then just put a bit of ultramarine blue on there, and again a bit of that grey mix, and it seems to be the right shade. Um, so just playing about with that, just to get that edge, just something to sort of work towards then when I'm putting the actual uh, water lapping onto the 
the sand there it just gives me that little bit of sand to work with so just again putting the underdrawing in just placing that pigment in because what it does it puts the pigment into the tooth of the pastel mat and it makes it a lot easier then when you start placing those details in you've got some pigment to work on so it's just a case of just being free flowing really enjoy this stage as well because it's quite relaxing and it's it's very loose and you can get the energy in there so i try to really open up and feel the waves and and the atmosphere and look at it as a whole because so everything becomes one you see so i try and not separate it by putting too much detail in one spot but by, by just keeping everything sort of a feeling of oneness and aliveness and really enjoy that looseness to it and then that carries on then even in the detail stage your details become looser then if you can keep that feeling if you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow If you do find that you're getting sort of overwhelmed by all the details, always take a break, just have five minutes away from it. You know, keep quiet, just be centered in the moment and then come back to it with a fresh eye then. Uh, it's just, the more you can keep out of thinking, the more you can focus on the here and now because all the power you'll ever need and all the energy you'll ever need is in the moment here and now not some future point or some memory from the past it's just a matter of just being centered here and now and then this will just all happen all these colors and everything just mixes by themselves it's a strange feeling because all you do is just observe what happens after a while it becomes second nature now it's the detail stage now so what i'm doing here is again keeping open keeping in the moment but just looking at it as a whole and sensing what needs to be done so if there's an area that feels wrong it means it needs some attention so i'll go by its feeling rather than thinking so i don't think oh that looks wrong i sense it and if there's a feeling that it don't feel right it needs attention till it does feel right so that's how i I, I do these things if you do want to know more about color and how to get the correct shadows I have got a free class that's available for you the link is in the description below it's regarding portrait skin tones but it replies to everything I do landscapes seascapes it all applies whatever I, I seem to do so you, you're welcome to it it's in the description below so please check that out if you wish to acquire it so what I'm sensing now is how the values are is it dark enough in places and also the chroma how does it glow is some areas are glowing more than others now if it's glowing more add that little bit of lemon yellow to create more of a sort of zinginess to it and creating that sort of depth to it I'm adding that little bit of brown and blue which is changing the actual value when I glaze it's just randomly put on um, I'm not really precisely putting a glaze over a certain area I'm just like letting it go across I'm just letting it feel its way uh, give it freedom of movement um, so it's very hard to put in words really but here on the highlights I'm adding that Rembrandt white because the Sun is really sharp and beaming on those little glints here so I've put that in little dots here and there then just moving it around then with the Carbothella white. I'm using the Azurite Caran d'Ache there to add 
more vibrancy in certain areas so that's what I'm doing here is is getting that sort of chroma right in places to give it that sparkle to give it that life and that feeling of movement and energy how I approach it is a little dot here little stroke here little mark I'm not trying to put every detail the same it's just my interpretation of it it's almost impressionistic really when you look close at it it's all the different marks but when you look at away from it it all sort of merges and it looks realistic um, so that's where I'm at at the moment with it really it's just being spontaneous and, and really enjoying the freedom of just expressing uh, movement energy and colour just working on the distant waves now just adding that little bit of highlight I've put more highlight in the actual painting than there is in the reference image because I felt it needed a little bit more sort of life to it because photographs can make certain things look flat so I just needed to put that life in there so I just expressed it in the, in it uh, and just you know putting that little bit of lightness and then glaze over for more chroma um, in the distance it's more sort of ultramarine and as it comes closer to the shore it's more sort of this turquoisey colour so that's what I've done really is try to get that balance hope you enjoyed part one fascinating to do water is I've really enjoyed the change you know from just doing portrait it's been really interesting to do uh, part two will be out shortly that will be the sand and isla uh, and the finishing touches so be sure to watch out for that now if you've enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends it would mean so much to me because this will help the channel to grow and if there's any questions at all leave a message in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can in the meantime, please check out this video here for more content. Take care. Bye for now.